It is ten minutes after four, Naval Observatory time. I just heard it on the radio. Well, it still doesn't make it evening. I was being sarcastic. Oh. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken, you are dismissed from school at three o'clock? No, well, that's right. Mm-hmm. Then, in other words, it's taken you an hour and ten minutes to get from school to here. Well, it's the day after three, I guess it did. Yeah, well, it couldn't possibly be that uh, you took your own good time in coming home today because you knew that we're about a million chores for you around here. Oh, it's possible, Aunt Lori. That's not the reason I'm a little later than usual. You see, um, I stopped off at big hardware store on my way home today. I saw Jimmy Evans pass by here half an hour ago. He's in your class. You see, Mr. Breach has a new Roadmaster bike in his window. It um, has a horn and even a headlight. Boy, I'd sure like to have a bike like that. Might even have been three quarters of an hour ago when I saw Jimmy pass by here. And it doesn't have to be that bike. It could be, doesn't have to be the $65 bike. Could be any bike. Usually I like you to play outdoors after school. But today I... Janie, are you asking me for a bicycle? Well, I was just getting around to it, Aunt Lori. Now look here, honey. You're going to have to stop wanting so many things. Just last week we got a television set. Well, that doesn't help me get home from school any quicker. If Jimmy Evans can get home from school fast, why can't you? Because Jimmy rides home on his bicycle. Oh. Well, if you want a bicycle so badly, then why don't you save up your allowance and buy yourself one? Well, because um, Mr. Briggs' cheapest bike is $35, and my allowance is 50 cents a week. Well, then... Uh, and by the time I saved up $35, I'd be too old to ride a bike. Uh-huh. Well, then why don't you supplement your allowance by working on the side? Well, who would pay me $35 to do anything? You can work for me as a starter. Really, Aunt Lori? Uh-huh. 15 cents a rug. <laughs> oh, boy. Last call for breakfast. Everyone down in two seconds flat. Coming. Is us. Me too. Getting her family off to a good start each morning is a job mother takes seriously. So she gives them the morning juice with something extra. Sun Sweet Prune Juice. The best way to start the day. But be sure it's sunsweet prune juice because only sunsweet measures and controls the natural laxative element found in prunes to guarantee you the same strength from glass to glass. And only sunsweet is made from sunsweet prunes, the finest, sweetest grown. Unlike some prune juices, no sugar is needed. This is important because anything added weakens the laxative quality nature gives to the prunes themselves. That's why Sunsweet is nature's finest aid to regularity. So every day, give your family Sunsweet prune juice. Hi, Lori. Oh, hi, Pop. You're home early. Yeah, I thought I'd get some of those chores you want done over with before dinner. Oh, Pop, you, you didn't have to come home early. Oh. I want to do it. When spring rolls around, I tell you there's something in the air that makes a man feel like straightening up his nest after a long winter. Yeah. It was and, a beautiful day, wasn't it? Yeah. And look, it's still light out. Yeah. You know, that's what I like best about the warm season. You come home in daylight, and everything along the way looks so soft and green. Well, I think I'll start in by painting the screen. They're, uh, they're painted, Pop. Yeah, I know. I painted them last year. But I've got a theory about screens. I think they can stand a coat of paint each year. Makes the outside of the house look nice and cheerful. But they're already painted, Pop. Uh, yeah. They're already painted. Yeah? Yeah. Well, Jamie painted them. Jamie? Yeah. And he did a beautiful job, too. Well, that's fine. <laughs> well, then all I have to do is to hang them. They're hung, Pop. You mean, uh, they're hung? Uh-huh. Jamie hung them. Well, what do you know about that? Mm -hmm. And Jamie you know what he did? Yeah. Huh. 
He, uh, you know that hole in the screen upstairs in the upstairs bedroom? Yeah. And he put new screening in that. You know, the one that you were going to get to one of these days two summers ago. Well, I was going to get to it. Well, <laughs> Jamie got to it. Yeah, I know, I know. You just said that. Well, uh, well, I guess I'd better get to the man's work then. I'll beat the rust. It's too late, Pa. Jamie? Uh-huh. Yesterday afternoon. Well, yeah. Busy little beaver, isn't he? Well, he wants to earn enough money to buy himself a two-wheel bike, see? So I told him that I'd pay him for any odd jobs he wanted to do around here. Yeah, well, all this work you're giving him, you're liable to break the child labor law. Oh, now, Pop, he loves it. He's all business and efficiency. Yeah. It's wonderful to watch him. Where is the working man? Down in the basement. Hauling coal, I suppose. Pop! Well, he's done about everything else around here. <laughs> you know... I've got a sneaking suspicion that you're a little bit disappointed about those screens. Oh, not at all, not at all. <laughs> Look at all the work it saves me. You know, for 15 years, I've had to practically fall down on my knees and beg you to hang those screens every year. And now that Jamie's done it for me, you're sulking. Who's sulking? You are. <laughs> that is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard in my life. You should be delighted, Pop. Now you can go in and rest and relax. Read the paper before dinner. <laughs> yeah. Put the old horse out the pasture, huh? Oh, Pop. Oh, sure. Youth must be served. The old shoe is outworn its usefulness, so just throw it away. Put old Grandpa in the parlor with his newspaper. So he'll be out of the way. Oh, now, this is just too silly to discuss. Nobody's putting you out to pasture, and you know it. So stop over-dramatizing yourself. Now, look here. If it'll please you, just take the screens down and paint them again. Oh. Beat the rugs again. You don't ever have to go into the living room again. If, 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 if you just promise Jamie to buy him that bicycle, I'm sure he'll be delighted to rejoin the ranks of the unemployed. Yeah. Now, you please let me finish, or we'll never have dinner. Well, sure, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead and finish. But let me tell you one thing. There are still a few things around this house that it takes a man to do and not a boy. Well, of course, Pop. Nobody ever said there wasn't. For well, now, no, where is it? What? The paring knife. You've been wanting me to sharpen it for the last couple of months. The, pa the paring knife? Yeah, well, don't you remember? You were complaining about how dull it was the other day. Yeah, and you want to sharpen it now? Yeah, here's where we separate the men from the boys. Oh, honestly, Pop, you're making much too much about this whole thing. The, uh, paring knife, please. Yeah. Well, well, you see, I, uh, I took that paring knife out today, and I was going to start working with it, but I just couldn't do a thing with it, so, so I thought... Hi, Grandpa! Uh, hello, hello, mm -hmm. Amy. Yes, uh... <clears throat> Go on. Oh, yeah. Hey, where was I? Well, you were peeling potatoes. Oh, yeah. So, well, anyway, the knife was so dull that I couldn't even cut the peel. <laughs> oh, you won't have that trouble now, Aunt Laurie. Uh, Jamie, please, your Aunt Laurie talking. Go on, Laurie. Uh, wh where am I now? Well, you couldn't cut the peel. Oh, oh yeah. So, so then I decided that maybe I'd ask Jamie if he thought he'd be able to, to sharpen the knife for me. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he couldn't, huh? No, he said he could. Oh, well, boys and enthusiasm, sure, they'll tackle anything. Well, mm, give me the knife, I'll take it down and sharpen it. But, but I sharpened it, Grandpa. Lord. Well, I didn't know you were going to be so touchy about the whole thing. You <laughs> let this child sharpen a knife? Well, he was very careful and he wore heavy gloves. Jamie, are you all right? Oh, I'm fine, Grandpa. I've made a dollar and ninety-two cents already today. Laurie, I'm not only surprised, I am shocked. Oh. Give me the knife, Jamie. What are you going to do? Well, right now, I'm going to take this down and try to sharpen it. And after dinner, I'm going to explain fully to you why it is dangerous to let little boys play with weapons. But I've already sharpened it, Grandpa. Yeah, and I've got to have it to peel the potatoes. Jamie, uh, it is a great art to sharpen knives. I mean, you, uh, it takes a great many years to learn the skill of it. No, I realize that your intentions were of the best, but he has practically ruined the knife. Now, just look how dull he's made the blade. Oof. Oh, gosh, Grandpa, I thought you had more sense to do a thing like that. Are you all right, Pop? There's nothing, nothing at all. I'll go get a Band-Aid. No, 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 no. I'm perfectly capable of getting it myself. After all... 
There's life in the old boy yet. What's the matter with Grandpa? Did he have a hard day at the drugstore or something? Uh, no, no, he came home in very good humor. Well, something's upsetting him, if you ask me. Yeah, the screen. Well, what's the matter? Didn't he like the way I painted them? Uh, sit down, Anna Jane. I want to talk to you. Look, honey, I... I hope you're old enough to understand this. You see, your grandpa isn't as young as he used to be. Well, nobody is. Yes, I know, dear, but after you pass a certain age, you begin to get kind of touchy about the subject, you know? You don't want people to think that you can't do everything that you always have done, you know? Well, is Grandpa at that touchy stage now? It certainly looks like it, yes. Well, he still does an awful lot around here. Sure he does, may more than ever, maybe. But, but you see, when he comes home and finds that you've done all the chores that he expected to do, kind of makes him feel as if he's not needed around here anymore. We'll always need Grandpa around here. You and I know that, Jamie, but you see, Grandpa's not so sure. That's why I'm not going to be able to ask you to do as much work around here anymore. Do you, do you understand that? I guess so, Aunt Lori. So you're growing up, too. I won't ever do another lick of work around here if you don't want me to. Well, let's not go overboard. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything that'll upset Grandpa. And look, dear, just another thing. Uh, don't let don't let Grandpa know we discussed this because then he might think we were humoring him, you know. Okay. <laughs> Boy, he sure is getting touchy, isn't he? Well, he'll outgrow it just like everything else. You know, there's just one problem, Aunt Lori. Oh, Jamie, you did a wonderful job on this knife. It cuts beautifully. A very big problem. Yeah, what's that? Well, if I can't work for you anymore, how am I going to earn the money to buy that bike? Oh, yes, say now that is a complication, isn't it? Unless I find another way to earn the money. A perfect solution. I'll go into business for myself. Grandpa couldn't be touchy about that. Oh, no. Maybe I'll earn enough money to buy that $65 bike. Well, it'll have to be a pretty successful business. <laughs> I hear there's an awful lot of money in steel. Oh, yes. The steel corporations are among the biggest in the... Steel? Sorry, I'm home. I'm in the kitchen, Bob. I picked up a rake and some things. I'm, I'm going all out for gardening this year. <clears throat> Did you hear me, Laurie? That's nice, Pop. What was that, Lloyd? I said that's nice. Yeah, I said, uh, what is that? What's what? Well, that strange noise. Uh, oh, hi. Is uh, something gone wrong again, Mrs. Oh, no, 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 thanks. Plummy's just fine. Oh. Let me see some of those new tools you got. Oh, oh, there it goes again. Oh, that? Yeah, that. Yeah, well, uh, that, that's nothing. That's nothing. Yeah, it's coming from down the basement. Yeah, yeah, Jenny's down there. Oh. What's he doing? Like he's working. He's, he's uh, open, you know, he's going into business for himself. Steel. Steel? Uh-huh. What's he doing down there? Smelting it? No, no. He's, uh, he's sharpening it. Uh, he's opened his own uh, knife sharpening establishment. He's Just sharpening knives again? Yeah. Professionally this time? Yeah. That's... And you allowed him to do it? Well, I believe in the system of free enterprise. Well, so do I, but I don't believe in little boys playing with knives. Well, he's not playing, he's working, and he's wearing those heavy gloves like I told you, and he promised me he'd be very careful. Now, where are you going? Well, I'm going down there and put him out of business. Well, you can't do that, Pop. He's trying to earn enough money to buy that two-wheeled bike. Well, I'll buy him a two-wheeled bike myself. And the sharpener to boot? Oh, is that what made the noise? Yeah, that sharpener alone cost $15, and the cheapest bike in Mr. Briggs' store is $35. Where did he get $15 for a sharpener? <sighs> he bought it on the installment plan from Mr. Briggs. Oh, so he could make money to buy the bicycle, huh? That's right. <laughs> well, that sounds business practice anyway. Sure, I knew you'd see it our way, Pop. Yeah, only I don't like the idea of him handling a lot of knives. I'm going down there and try to talk him out of it. Well, good luck. Oh, hi. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Grandpa. 
Well, I hear you've uh, gone into business. Uh-huh. How do you like it? Oh, fine. Business is good, huh? Yep. You know how much I'm making for sharpening this one knife? Fifty cents. You don't say. Uh-huh. That's as much as a whole week's allowance. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good little <clears throat> knife there. Hmm. Sheffield Steel. Yeah? Whose is it? Jimmy Evans, mother's. Well, she must have a lot of confidence in your work to trust you with a knife like that. Oh, she doesn't know about it yet. Oh, she doesn't, huh? No, you see, she wasn't home when I stopped by to see if they needed any work done. Oh, yeah. You see, it was Jimmy's idea that I sharpen her knife for. He said he heard her say that she wanted to have it sharpened. Hmm. Well, a knife like that must cost at least uh, $15. Oh, 17 Jimmy said. He was with his mother when she bought it. Oh. Well, now, as a strictly uh, business proposition, I uh, advise you to return that knife to Mrs. Evans. If anything happened to it, you'd be responsible. Oh, what could happen to it, Grandpa? Well, might break. This is Sheffield Steel. I can't break. Morning, noon, and night time. Drink it every day. Drink some sweet fruit juice and keep sunny with some sweet way. Keep sunny, keep regular with the fruit juice that gives you something extra. Yes, every morning drink sun sweet prune juice made from famous sun sweet prunes, the finest, sweetest grown. Now, unlike some prune juices, sun sweet has no sugar added. In fact, nothing added to weaken the laxative quality of the prunes. And of all prune juices, only SunSweet measures and controls the natural element in prunes to guarantee you the same measured laxative strength from bottle to bottle, from glass to glass. That's why SunSweet is nature's finest aid to regularity. It's rich in iron and calcium, too. Tomorrow morning, every morning, for regularity, give your family good-tasting SunSweet prune juice. How much it cost to go into bankruptcy? Oh, you couldn't afford it. You know what I wish, Grandpa? Yeah. I wish it was yesterday. Yeah, you're too young to be living in the past. No, because yesterday I didn't have a thing to worry about. I just had to get $35 to buy a new bike. Now today I owe Mr. Briggs $15 for the knife sharpener and Mrs. Evans $17 for the knife. Well, you always have to expect a slight recession when you start new business. Slight? Mm. There's nothing slight about $32. Jamie? Yes, Aunt Laurie? You want it on the phone? I can't speak to anyone now. He's in a business conference. It's Jimmy Evans. Oh. Uh-oh. You'd better talk to him, Jamie. He says his mother's awfully upset because he gave you her best carving knife to sharpen. I tried to explain to him it was all right that you knew what you were doing and every... Oh. Is this the knife? Yep. Part of it. There's the other part. Oh. Well, I guess I'd better go speak to Jimmy Evans. What are you going to tell him? The truth. Well, of course. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Huh? You couldn't leave well enough alone. That child was perfectly happy yesterday, earning his money, doing the chores around the house. Look at him now. Poor child. Well, <laughs> poor child is right. He's in debt for $32. Thanks to you. Me? Yes, you, raising all that hullabaloo because he took over your chores in the house. You forced him to make his way in the world. I didn't tell him anything about it. Well, but I did. Well, what'd you do that for? Well, I told him your feelings were hurt. Oh, then he's going into this business on account of me. That's right. Well, I'll be. You'll be what? I'll be seeing you. What? Yes? Yes? When? Right away? Well, I can't deliver it right away. Well, I, um, I don't have the delivery boy. Well, I know she's, well, I don't know why she's worried about that one little knife. All right, one big knife. Well, I know your mother wants it back, Jimmy, and she'll get it back as soon as I fix it. No, not sharpen it. Fix it. I've already sharpened it. 
Now, Jimmy, don't get panicky. I just had a little accident, that's all. Oh, it cuts just as good as ever. Even better. But it's just not as long as it used to be. Well, no, it's only an inch. Just a tiny bit. Well, well, that may... Well, it's not as pointy either. And it makes it much less dangerous. What? She will. She will? Oh, no. Well, I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do it. Tell your mother not to worry. Goodbye, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, I still got one left in stock, but I can't promise delivery till late this afternoon. Well, what's the big rush anyway? Yeah, well, look, I can't deliver it myself. I've got no one to mind the store. Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait. Uh, I think I just found somebody. Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, hiya, Jamie. How's the knife sharpening business? Terrible, Mr. Briggs. Say, uh, how would you like to do me a big favor, huh? I was wondering if you'd do one for me. Okay, well, that's fair enough. Uh, you tell me yours first, huh? Well, it's about this knife. Now, isn't that a coincidence? That's the same knife I wanted to talk to you about. I'd like you to deliver it for me. Deliver it? You're not going to sell it, are you? Yep, last one in stock. Oh, no, please don't sell it, Mr. Briggs. Why not? I mean, don't sell it to anyone but me. You? Yes, please, Mr. Briggs. Now, look, Jamie, do you think you can afford a $17 knife? Well, not exactly, but I was wondering if you'd sell it to me on the installment plan. <laughs> you know, nothing down. And at 20 cents a week? 20 cents a week. Yeah, well, that's all I can afford. Now, look here, J.D. Now that you're a businessman, too, you ought to know that a cash offer is worth two in the bush. And that's what your grandpa just gave me. Cash offer? My grandpa? Mm hmm You mean, you mean Frank L. Dimmer? He's your grandpa, ain't eh? Oh, and he wants to buy the, buy that knife? Yeah, yeah, just now call on the telephone, Jamie. Well, what does he want it for? Oh, dang, if I can figure it out. Says it ain't even for himself, it's for Mrs. Evans. Mrs. Evans? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, chase me why your grandpa's getting presents to Mrs. Evans. Oh, I should be buying it for Mrs. Evans, not Grandpa. You want to buy it for Mrs. Evans, too? Well, yes. See, I broke her. But not Grandpa. <sighs> it gets more complicated by the minute. It's very simple. You see, I broke Mrs. Evans' knife, and as a businessman, I'm responsible. <laughs> well, look, you just fight that out with your grandpa. And, uh, would you mind delivering this first? Okay, I sure will. Okay. Oh, Jamie, uh, wait a minute. If you really, really mean that about keeping this on a business level, I think I have a little proposition that'll interest you. Well, if it'll get me out of the mess I'm in, I'm interested. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see. And you haven't seen him all afternoon. Okay, thanks, Edna. Bye. Not a sign of I'm going to tell him he can do all the chores around here he wants to if he comes home. If? Yeah, he was in a bad state of mind. Oh, Pop. Uh, it's all my fault. Oh, you didn't encourage him to go into the knife sharpening business. I did. Ah, oh, you can't blame yourself for that, Laurie. Oh, yes, I can, and I do. Oh, maybe this is Jamie now. Yeah, or the police. Oh, Pop. Hello? Uh, oh, yes, Mrs. Evans. Mrs. Evans. <laughs> She's as responsible as anybody. Yeah. Oh, fine. Well, that's nice. It's Yes, I will. All right, thanks a lot. Bye. What'd she want? Oh, she wanted me to tell Jamie that she's very pleased with a knife sharpening job. It looks just like a new knife. Oh, she sent all the rest of her knives here to be sharpened. Not if I have anything to say about it, she won't. Hi, Lori! Hi, oh, Pop! He's all right. Oh, I'm gonna talk to him. You... Well, what's that? A bicycle. Where'd you get it? From Mr. Briggs. On the installment plan? Nope. I didn't have to pay a penny for it. Yeah. As long as I'm his delivery boy, I can use it whenever I want. So you finally got your two-wheeler, huh? Uh-huh. And I've been making deliveries all afternoon. Ever since I delivered that night for Mrs. Evans, I've been so rushed I didn't have a chance to phone you. I hope you weren't worried. Oh, no, not at all. Just give us a call next time. Well, Jamie, we'd better start cleaning the attic. You know, we've decided to let you work for us again. Oh, I'd like to, Grandpa, but you see, I've got a few more deliveries after dinner. You know, um, now that uh, Mr. now I'm working for Mr. Briggs, and the $3 a week he gives me, plus tips, 
Uh, he has priority on my services. Three dollars a week? Uh-huh. Well. Well, and I'll be able to pay you back for that knife crap uh, real soon. Oh, there's no hurry, boy. It looks like you're going to be able to clean out that attic yourself, Pop. Myself? Yeah, aren't you happy, Grandpa? Yeah. I'm positively delighted. <laughs> so am I. So am I. <laughs> Jamie will be back in just a moment after this message from Sunsweet. Little Jack the Giant Killer was small, but my oh my. When the giant tried to catch him, oh how Jack did fly. He ran right down the beanstalk with supersonic speed. And with his axe gave two quick hacks. It was quite a daring deed. Jack keeps fit and healthy the regular Sunsweet way. Because he drinks Sunsweet prune juice to start off every day. Yes, keep healthy and regular with a fruit juice that gives you something extra. Sunsweet prune juice. Now, unlike some prune juices, Sunsweet has no sugar added. In fact, nothing added to weaken the laxative quality of the prunes. And of all prune juices, only Sunsweet measures and controls the natural element in prunes to guarantee you the same measured laxative strength from bottle to bottle, from glass to glass. That's why Sunsweet is nature's finest aid to regularity. Tomorrow morning, every morning, for regularity, give your family good-tasting, sun-sweet prune juice. Hi, Grandpa! Uh, well, how's the delivery business getting on? Oh, fine. How are you doing with your attic? Uh, the attic? Yeah. You were going to clean it up. That's what you told Aunt Lori. Well, uh, I haven't got around to that yet. You know, it's quite a big job. Well, Aunt Lori offered me two dollars for it if I have done it yesterday. Well, you know, it's worth three dollars, uh, if not more. Grandpa, you're not offering it to me, are you? Well, Hi, uh, Hi Aunt Lori. Well, what, Grandpa? Well, uh, never mind. Uh, guess I'll get at it. What's he going to get at? The attic. Oh, no. Well, don't you want him to clean it? I cleaned it myself this morning. <laughs> Good night, everyone. See you next week. Two weeks from tonight, Jamie will again be brought to you by Sunsweet Prune Juice, the fruit juice that gives you something extra. Sunsweet, made only from California's famous Sunsweet prunes. Look for the Sunsweet label. Same time, same station. See Sky King on ABC television.